Happening now, a local parent is warning about the dangers of lead paint to look at a new educational effort on the subject. And a Chautauqua County pharmacy is closing their doors. Plus, we introduce you to the dish, keeping Buffalo Bills fans fat and happy. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Those stories and more are coming up. But first, a Jamestown area mother is touting the dangers of lead paint poisoning after her son suffered severe side effects when he came into contact with the toxic compound. As Alyssa Wright reports, this issue is a big problem for Chautauqua County, specifically because the area's population of historic buildings. Since the majority of homes in our area were built before 1978, when there were no regulations on the use of lead paint, most contained trace amounts of chemicals. 80% of the homes in Chautauqua County were built before 1978, which is kind of the precursor. That's when um, the federal government banned lead paint from being sold and used. Um, and so 80% of our homes most likely have lead in them. I'm trying to help um, the county with spreading awareness about lead poisoning um, and then in hopes of spreading awareness also hopefully do some prevention and have people understand what the risks are associated with lead. Jade Shirey became an advocate after her son suffered lead poisoning. We have a lot of difficulties going on and so I think I'm in the perfect position to help people realize what's going on. It can cause irreversible learning and behavior issues, um, loss of IQ points, learning disabilities, ADHD, and in some cases, autism. Luckily, county health officials like Anna Powell are working to get homes tested before any harm can occur. Give us a call at the health department. We can come in, we can do an inspection of your home, we can offer you training and um, some supplies to help remediate those lead hazards. Alyssa Wright, WNY News Now. To learn more about lead paint testing, you can call the Childhood Lead in Healthy Homes office. That's at 716-753-4489. Well, police in Jamestown say a victim involved in a fight on the city's north side pulled a fire alarm and plea for help. The call came into both Jamestown police and firefighters just before 10 o'clock on Thursday night. While there was no actual fire, police report there was a need for help. Following an investigation, officers accused 46-year-old Grant Monroe Jr. of becoming, quote, disorderly and throwing the victim's cell phone out of a fourth floor window of the apartment. The alleged aggressor was subsequently arrested and faces several charges, including criminal mischief and aggravated family offense. He was held at city jail. And a 40-year-old woman faces several charges following an alleged domestic dispute in the reception area of Jamestown Police Headquarters. Officers charged Jamie Warner with resisting arrest and obstructing governmental administration following the incident on Thursday evening. While police were investigating this crime, Warner allegedly failed to comply with officers and later resisted arrest when they attempted to take her into custody. And at Chautauqua County Pharmacy, they are closing their doors. Walgreens plans to shutter their Dunkirk location next month. Located at 327 Main Street, the chain's last day in business is Monday, November 14th. Before that, customers will need to make alternative arrangements for their prescription medications. In a statement, a Roll Green spokesperson told us, quote, As we expand as a leader in the healthcare field, we're focused on creating the right network of stores in the right number of locations to the meet the needs of the communities we serve. They went on to say there are several factors into this closing, including things like the dynamics of our local market and changes in buying habits of patients and customers. Well, a new way to keep those up to date with the municipal news here in Jamestown is now up and running. Installed by Alert Media out of Austin, Texas, a new citywide alert system here in Jamestown was first introduced by Mayor Eddie Sundquist, approved for purchase by City Council over the summer, and now has officially kicked off. In the form of text messages, emails, and app notifications, the alerts will cover a variety of topics from public safety, housing, neighborhood updates, governmental closures, and significant weather alerts. You can sign up online at jamestownny.gov forward slash alerts. 
You can sign up via text by texting the word subscribe. That's to 716-333-8617. Well, it certainly is a beautiful day out there across our area. Let's switch gears now, get a first check of our weather forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter joining us with what could be a summertime shot over Chautauqua Lake if you didn't notice the leaves in the back. Yes, I know. I mean, it's fantastic out there with the blue skies and the blue water on uh, Chautauqua Lake. It's looking nice out there and the temperatures in the word of Shania Twain are up from here. So uh, the satellite and radar composite that it's running, but nothing's really happening. So we have a lot of blue sky out there today. Enjoy it while we've got it because temperatures are going up as we head into the weekend. The high yesterday was 41. We started the day at 31 10 degree temperature difference from the high and low uh, 79 and 21 are the records. And also just to make you feel a little more depressed, the sunset times are getting closer and closer to six o'clock by next Thursday, 617 for the sunset. So a milder day today, though, lots of sunshine, a few high clouds mix in through the afternoon, 54 to 62, and uh, it's still going to be breezy with that southwest wind averaging about 10 to 15 miles an hour. As I just mentioned, big warm up on the way. How warm are we getting? We'll talk about it with the Ultimate Satellite Solution 7 day later in the show, Justin. As we do continue, we have a lot more news to get to this half hour. A disgraced New York politician back in the spotlight as he's launching a new podcast and the push for nurse pay increases continue here in the Empire State. Stay with us. WNY News Now. We'll be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. Looking for a fair and honest auto mechanic? Look no further than DeWyas Auto Service. Located at 140 Main Street in Randolph, our family-owned business is ready for all of your automotive needs. From general service to more complex repairs, count on DeWyas Auto to keep you on the road. We not only keep your cars running smoothly, but also looking great with our expert detailing crew. Send us a message on Facebook or call us today at 716-358-2292 to set up an appointment. DeWyas Auto Service. Fair, honest, and the best prices guaranteed. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at OneBall4TC.com. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Andrew Cuomo, the 56th governor of New York State, who resigned in disgrace over corruption allegations, has reemerged into the public spotlight in podcast form. In his opening monologue of the new podcast, which lasted about 10 minutes, Cuomo makes no reference to the scandal surrounding his time as New York governor. He also makes no reference to the reason he resigned from office. However, his first guest, former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci, offered his take on Cuomo's fall from grace. The power that you had and what you represented in the Democratic Party was so overwhelming to the radical side of your party that they did everything in their power to take you out and shoot you. They were coming for you. Okay, you were getting too much power for those people. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. The former governor partnered with Quake Media to produce the podcast, whose first episode aired yesterday on YouTube. And Governor Kathy Hochul recently announced a series of pay increases for nurses within New York State agencies. Our state capital correspondent spoke to advocates and New York State Public Employees Federation about the impact this could have on retention rates. 
Governor Kathy Hochul plans to increase pay for nurses an average of 4.5 percent per title. This will bring the starting salary for day shift nurses upstate to nearly $90,000. But some advocates are saying there are bigger concerns than pay impacting retention rates in the workforce, like workplace violence, staffing ratios, and mandated overtime. It, nurses, nurses get beat up, literally and figuratively beat up uh, by patients, by family members. Um, and so the workplace violence is a real issue. In 2021, the national average of registered nurse turnover increased by 8.4 percent, according to a recent report from NSI Nursing Solutions Incorporated. One of the goals of this pay increase initiative by the governor is to improve retention rates and recruitment. The New York State Public Employees Federation said they believe that this pay increase will achieve just that. It is definitely going to make a difference. But moving forward, Spence said they would like to see state leaders make progress on limiting mandated overtime. When we're being told to work double shifts and, and all sorts of overtime and have to go a couple of weeks without a day off, that's when errors can happen because nurses are just flat out exhausted. In Albany, Elise Klein, WNY News Now. A federal judge has temporarily blocked a part of New York state law that makes it a crime for people to carry guns in places of worship. U.S. District Judge sided with two Buffalo area clerks joined together to fight two gun rights organizations who had sued and sought a temporary restraining order to stop the enforcement of this law while the case proceeds. New York lawmakers rewrote the state's gun laws last summer after the U.S. Supreme Court invalidated the old system of granting permits to carry handguns outside the home. Well, among the provisions of the new law was a ban on guns in places of worship and other areas deemed sensitive. Well, the man who accosted Republican gubernatorial candidate Lee Zeldin at a campaign event in western New York will be released from jail and into an alcohol treatment program. David Jabanins will enter a treatment program administered by the Veterans Administration. He will then be transferred to a halfway house operated by an organization that assists troubled vets. The attack on Zeldin, a Congress member from Long Island who's challenging Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul, occurred back on July 21st at a campaign rally near Rochester. And this week, the Rural Pennsylvania Health Group held a hearing on youth mental health in rural schools. Experts who spoke out say there's an alarming uptick in mental health concerns among students, especially in rural communities. Data collected in 2021 shows that thoughts of suicide, suicide attempts, have all increased among students, especially in those grades 6 through 8. Experts and lawmakers discuss next steps in trying to reduce mental health concerns in the aftermath of the pandemic and virtual learning. Feelings of isolation and not feeling like there is someone there to support you um, is a significant uh, contributor to mental health concerns. The hearing promoted promising initiatives like school-based therapy programs launched by some health networks. However, according to experts here, staffing, reimbursement rates, and funding are all still a major problem in addressing this serious issue. Well, the leaves are falling and temperatures are dropping across much of our nation, but just how cold and snowy could we get this winter? Well, forecasters at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they released their winter weather outlook. So who needs to bust out the parka? Ivan Rodriguez is taking a closer look at what Mother Nature may have in store for us in the months ahead. Winter is coming, and Americans in the northern tier of the country should brace themselves for cooler than average conditions, according to NOAA's newly released winter weather outlook. We are favoring um below normal temperatures for that season from the Pacific Northwest across the Northern Rockies uh, to the Northern Plains, uh, further eastward to the Western uh, Great Lakes. Precipitation chances also up for Northern states, the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley that could set the stage for some snow days. On average over the season, we are favoring uh, generally above normal snowfall in those generally colder and some of the wetter areas. But not everyone in the U.S. will face a frosty future. Much of the southern half of the country and along the eastern seaboard will likely see warmer than average temperatures due to the anticipated reappearance of La Nina for a third consecutive year. However, La Nina also puts a damper on precipitation, 
That means places already experiencing extreme drought, like the West, Great Plains, and parts of the Southeast, could see conditions persist or worsen. We tend to have drier than normal conditions along the southern tier of the U.S., and so that's why drought ex expansion is predicted. But winter weather is fickle. Fluctuations in La Nina, along with changes in Arctic oscillation patterns, are harder to predict. So those wild winter events like polar vortexes and bomb cyclones can still drop in and drop the temperature, despite the current outlook. In Washington, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. Ivan, thank you. Hopefully not too cold. Well, coming up, we introduce you to our new pet of the week. And later, we're taking a look at a brand new Buffalo Bill-shaped pizza that soon could be coming to a home oven near you. But first, Dakota joins us once again with a full look at our weather forecast and what the weekend has in store. When severe weather breaks, one team has you covered, tracking the storms as they happen. Catch your first defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. Walking from Jamestown to Orchard Park is a long trek, but when rallying for a good cause, anything is possible. Starting on November 11th, I'm walking over 60 miles to the Buffalo Bills Stadium, raising money for two great causes, Harrison's Playmakers and Foster Care in Chautauqua County. Learn more about my journey and to donate at ccsolutions716.com. WNY News Now is covering stories that matter to you. 15-year-old Yadiel Diaz was subject to a public humiliation stunt by a fellow student in an act of violence and bullying. Now Yadiel's mother, Raquel, has had enough. Officials are trying to work with the county's homeless coalition to help support the homeless population locally. There are also plans in the works to build two new shelters. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Fast, accurate, and every day. First defense weather. Welcome back, everybody. And what I say every year, take those winter weather outlooks with a grain of salt, okay? Just to let you know on that. But hey, you know, anytime you take a picture of a waterfall or a babbling brook or a creek, it's going to make the weather segment. This stuff is calming to me. I love this. Our friend Don sending this in and... I could stare at that all day. That is so relaxing. We need that on this Friday. So if you have any pictures or videos of the weather, Hunters WX on Twitter, the First Defense Weather page on Facebook, and use the hashtag MyLocalWX. Updated yesterday is the fall foliage, and we are now past the peak. So now the peak colors are starting to fade. Now, as we get into uh, the rest of the fall season, we have seen the peak colors already. So we're already past peak on the fall foliage. We also have a meteor shower that peaks tonight as well. This is the meteor shower that comes out of Haley's Comet. And uh, we're going to have a great night for it. Clear skies and the moonlight is only going to be 17%. So a good sky for that. You can see upwards of 20 meteors per hour. And the meteor velocity is about a 48,000 miles per hour. So they're known for their fast speed. Ah, it's nice downtown. 53 as a noon hour right now. It's still breezy with that south wind of 16 and a wind gust at 21. We still do have a wind chill though of 48, but all in all, definitely not bad. Friday night lights get for the week is of course Jamestown. They are taking on Clarence at home tonight. So very little change to the forecast from yesterday. We start around 50. We fall down to the mid to upper 40s, but clear skies. So no weather hassles for the game at all tonight. The next thing we're keeping an eye on is really going to be warm air. Take a look at the six to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center and warm air is favored across the eastern half of the country. So we are going to be warmer than average over the next several days. And there's your reason why a big line up a high pressure right across the eastern uh, uh the east half of the country that is keeping any rain at bay and really is just going to leave us with fantastic weather future scan is moving but the weather ain't changing look at this lots of sunshine maybe a few high clouds we'll keep it going into tonight mainly clear skies great for stargazing and of course watching for that meteor shower as we head into tomorrow Another fantastic day, lots of sunshine. It's just going to be a rinse and repeat type of weather. But as we get into Sunday, we'll mix a few clouds in here by the time we go into Sunday afternoon. So the forecast for tonight looks like this 39 to 48, mainly clear and starlit and not quite as chilly, but still breezy. Now the next seven days of your life powered by ultimate satellite solutions. So look at that, Justin, 69 Sunday. I've got 70 for Monday, lots of sunshine. And by the time we head into mid 
next week we start to go down, but still in the mid-60s, Justin. All right, Dakota, thank you very much. Well, in an effort to help our furry friends find a forever home, we're partnered with the folks at the Chautauqua County Humane Society for our Pet of the Week segment. Joining us today is Brian and Molly to talk more about this week's featured furry friend. Thank you both for uh, coming in studio. Thank you, Justin. Thank so, you. So, these guys are so cute. <laughs> I love their colors. Can you introduce us to them? Are you a speed wagon? My Mr. Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So these guys have a little bit of an interesting background. We have our TNR program through the shelter. Their mom was actually a TNR client of ours. Mm. And the owner, caretaker, decided that she would help by keeping these kittens long enough so we could get them into the shelter. They were large enough. So now we've got them in the shelter. There was more of them in the litter, too. These guys are leukemia positive, which we're hoping they'll test out in a few weeks or a few months and be negative so they can go into a normal home. Wow. But they have basically did our instant foster program, our TNR program, and we're just wonderful people in the community to help us get through them getting big enough, get spayed and neutered, and move along to get adopted. And I know any time you have like a diagnosis like mm -hmm. that, a lot of times people maybe are frustrated with having to overcome something like that. But it sounds like, especially for the kitty leukemia, they, they can be cured from this. It's not a cure, they can, yeah. um, they can be transient. Mm -hmm. It's a form of it. So we will retest them again in three months if they're not adopted before then, because they're up for adoption now. Okay. We do adopt out our leukemia positive and our AIDS positive kitties, which is a great four step for us for the shelter. So a lot of times these guys will actually test out, it just depends on how their health conditions are and they'll go through. They can live very long, healthy, healthy, healthy mm happy and healthy lives. And that was speak. my next question. Mm -hmm. They, If they do go to a home, mm -hmm. is there anything people have to watch out for or it, is it just like another pet? Just basically like another pet. If they get a cold, it might last a little bit longer. But we do, the leukemia positive kitties do have to go into home with other leukemia positive kitties and or be home by themselves. But we have two kittens and a fe adult female that currently are all leukemia. So if somebody wants three cats, yeah. They have a whole household ready-made. It's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready-made. Uh, that's the thing. It, the more the merrier sometimes mm -hmm. when it comes to <laughs> yeah. cats. You just, you know, maybe you want to get a room of vacuum or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so Miss Juliet's also at the shelter, and she's a leukemia-positive kitty. But, yeah, so they are up for adoption and yeah. ready to go, but they are very sweet. And as we mentioned in previous interviews, kittens are so impressionable mm -hmm. that if you adopt them, maybe you want to adopt these two together. Mm -hmm. um, they okay. a have a whole life ahead of them, mm -hmm. and then b they you mold them to be the pet you want. Yes. They'll learn your mannerisms, mm -hmm. and you know the dogs are man's best friend, or well, cats could be too. Yes, so, they really are. Yeah, cats are very, very wonderful. And one thing we did want to talk about too today, Brian, and, and having you come in, mm -hmm. Molly. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining us. Is in a case like this, there's probably a lot of medical things behind the scenes that you guys do at the Humane Society to mm -hmm. get these animals Yeah, ready. it's actually Veterinary Technicians Week this week, and that's why I wanted to put Molly in the spotlight, <laughs> put her in the hot seat, you know, <laughs> instead of giving you know her a free pizza or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, stay around, because we will have that coming up oh. if you want a slice. Okay. Uh, but but uh, on that point, Molly, as a vet tech, mm -hmm. and we're at the Humane Society, yeah. what are some of the things you do that... The, I'm um, sure it's crucial to operation. There's a lot. When they come in, they get their first health exam, vaccines, warmer, flea control, see if there's any issues. We need to have the docs take peek at. If they get colds, we work on the medications. The docs have told us what we can use to prescribe for them, yeah. get the meds started. Their enrichment to make sure they're doing what they need to do, that they're not stressed out. If they are stressed in one room, we try to get them moved around. Basically, just kind of keeping tabs on a lot of things, um, getting called in after hours to make sure yeah. things are fine. But it's all worth it for these guys, your purring, to get them on the way to their new homes, which is huge. Is that what makes it, seeing a cat like mm -hmm. this have he's, such a rebound where he's able to go home now for yeah. you? Because I'm, I'm sure it's a lot of hard work. It is a lot of hard work, and we run the spay neuter clinic in our shelter for three days a week. So there are some long hours put in, but it's a lot of reward. Yeah. So it, it helps a lot, and it's just nice to see them getting out and getting into homes and not being stuck in different places. Yeah. Yeah. But they to find their cherished homes and to be to hear the stories from the people that come through clinic, to have their pets altered, that we help them this way, that way, and then they would refer people, just to help get the pet population possibly a little bit under control, or at least know people are doing their part. Yeah, and I know this week we've talked about you guys are at capacity again when mm -hmm. it comes to cats. It's yeah. been a problem not just here but across the nation. Yeah. This weekend you're hosting another event at the mall yeah. to try to help. We'll be at the Chautauqua Mall from noon to three tomorrow, um, where you have essentially all of our foster kittens are coming in. 
Um, we have we're, we had three were adopted since we even announced this. We're at nineteen, which is still quite a few. Yeah. Um, the previous two that we've done like in this fashion, we've had thirteen adoptions of both of them. Um, twenty six between the two, so we're really hoping to have that kind of success again. Um, we are um, having the adoption fee, so it's fifty dollars for one, seventy five for two. And I always like to put the plug in. They are pretty social animals. Two yeah. is not yes. a bad idea if no. you don't no. if you don't have any. Um, yeah, I can so. testify. My mom had two kittens. I think I've talked on the show before. She one was for my sister, but they were living together, and she couldn't separate them, so they got a third kitten for my sister. Mm-hmm. My mom now has two kittens, and it is ramp a room every yeah, time I go fun. over there. They wear each other out and then they sleep for hours yeah. and that's all she has to she didn't really have to do much right. they, they, they love each other mm-hmm. and it's it's such an incredible bond and great pets to have so. and then they snuggle up and Take keep you warm and yeah. their their purring actually is supposed to reduce your blood pressure so oh really yeah well, there are benefits for yeah, yeah. everybody <laughs> yeah this one's well, already falling asleep the human side and the pet side yes. thank you both for coming in together again chqhumane.org if you want to learn more about these guys or anybody else at the shelter well, coming up next, Bills fans, they have a perfect party item, a pizza in the shape of a Buffalo Bills logo. It's now a coming to a stone near you. Bronson hits the kitchen. I think he's got some samples to expect. Catch your first defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. Walking from Jamestown to Orchard Park is a long trek, but when rallying for a good cause, anything is possible. I'm Patrick Smarlo, and I need your help to get there. Starting on November 11th, I'm walking over 60 miles to the Buffalo Bills Stadium, raising money for two great causes, Harrison's Playmakers and Foster Care in Chautauqua County. Harrison's Playmakers is a nonprofit launched by former Buffalo Bills defensive tackle Harrison Phillips to connect kids with disabilities and sports. Furthermore, donations for this three-day hike will also benefit CASA of Chautauqua County and the Stone family. We're assisting local foster care children during National Adoption Month. Learn more about my journey and to donate at CC Solutions. 716.com. Our Bronson Rasmussen joining me at the desk today with more on uh, this strange creation, which is causing a lot of buzz. That is right, Justin. Uh, move it out of here so people can actually see it. It's uh, from Capola's in Bemis Point. They're selling their famous Buffalo Bills pizza, but not just fresh from the oven. I just got here from my house. I made this my own oven at home. Uh, that's really just such a great thing. Yeah, and I know you spoke to the brainchild, the man behind it all. Oh, brainchild yeah. of owner Luke Andriaccio, inspiration for this Bill's themed pie first came to him several years ago. The first one that came out, um, we did the outline and spinach uh, to really define the, the, the buffalo. And it came out really good and then we uh, perfected the way to make them uh, consistently very quickly. Ever since the diehard fan created his masterpiece, others from all across the region have visited the lakeside community to enjoy the dish. We are, our customers and our feedback has been amazing. We have uh, Bills fans that drive all the way from Buffalo and Orchard Park to get them. Uh, they buy a lot of them, a mass amounts of them, uh, now all at once. Uh, our taken bakes and our ones that we can produce here in the store. Patrons have a few different options when it comes to enjoying this Bill's themed pizza. You can eat it in restaurant, take it home, or now even bake it yourself. We just rolled out those a couple months ago. Uh, they're shrink wrapped and they have a label with cooking instructions that fit in a regular size oven that you would have at home. And the ones that we have here, they're much bigger. They fit in our sheet pizza box. In the end, the pizza artist is proud of his work. It feels good when you do something and you're uh, recognized for it. Go Buffalo, see the Bills. Now these take and bakes can be made at home in any residential oven, like mine. <laughs> Flavors like <laughs> pepperoni, chicken wing, tropical, and undertaker are some of the specialties they have, and there's plenty more that I do have there, Justin. And you're obviously eating the pepperoni right yeah. now as we cut off the tail of the Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I like it. Uh, the Buffalo Bill tastes delicious. You're a good chef. Good job. I mean, you just throw it in the oven. They did most of the work there. That's true. <laughs> now, having these pre-cooked things, they're always really good. Here oh, comes here comes Dakota. Dakota. See, I what? knew we he, he would want... Here, try it. Give it a shot. Have oh, some. Okay. Yeah. 
Give it a shot. The Let us know what enough, you think about it. But. <laughs> that is it for us today. We are out of the time. Of course, you can read more about this at WNYNewsNow.com. Have a good